Hello, I'm Simon and welcome to the CyRob YouTube channel. Nearly five years ago now, I did a video showing how to test a vacuum actuated VNT. Very, very simple test, short video. I'll leave a link in the description in case you haven't seen it. And um, it just showed the, the very basic procedure of manipulating the, the VNT mechanism using a vacuum pump in order to check that it's free moving and hopefully then going to perform how you want it to perform. There are electric VNTs though, so the VNT mechanism is moved by uh, an electric motor. And so I thought I'd do another video where I go into a bit more detail on the VNT system and also um, the, the kind of things you can look out for. At the very bare minimum, you're going to need to know what you know your your boost pressure is is supposed to be for your car, and you can get hold of that kind of information through technical journals, Haynes Manual, specialist forums for your car, or if you've got specialist software for your make of car, as I have, um, it will be listed in there as well. So you will need to know the, of the the kind of figures you're looking out for. And um, and then it will just be simple visual checks as well. You want to try and see the VNT mechanism actually moving. And finally, using diagnostics, but I'm keeping everything nice and cheap. And really, you should be having diagnostics for, for any modern car now. They start off for the Bluetooth dongle that I'm using. They're around about five to ten pounds use a free app. Um, I'm on Android, so I use Talk Pro, and you can get all sorts of useful data um, live as you're using the car. So you can uh, not only view the operation of the VNT with your own eyes prior to going out, but you can then also see the effect and whether or not boost is building once you're out and about on the road. So for my particular car, um, it's... From the information that I have available to me, I'm looking at um, just over 2,000 hectopascal, just using very easy online conversion charts. I'm basically looking for an overall um, pressure from the map sensor of uh, just over 30 psi uh, or around about 2 bar. So the whole purpose of a VNT is to kind of be two turbos in one, really. So you've got the quick low down response of a small turbo, but you then have a sustained boost further up the rev range um, and it coping with a higher exhaust flow, just like a larger turbo. And um, And the way that they do the two things is you have a... A mechanism inside um, these veins um, which basically move in order to change the internal volume of air that can be moved around and so at low down revs it concentrates the airflow in order to generate boost from low down and then it opens up the veins and allows a greater flow through the turbo so that boost can continue through the rev range but if this mechanism does seize up you can end up having um you know either no boost low down and then it suddenly kicks in or you can have a pretty decent boost initially and then it dies out and um and, and flattens out so if i go under my car as you can see here similar to the uh the vacuum testing video everything's connected up as it should be there's no test equipment on there uh and so basically, as I start the engine and start to rev, what you'll see is I, uh, I have a sticking VNT mechanism. Because as the revs rise, there's no response from the VNT. And I'm pretty certain that I've got coked up veins inside the VNT. Luckily, they do free themselves up fairly quickly. So day to day, it's not causing me a problem. But it's um, it's an issue that I do need to address at some point. And on my car, what it does, it manifests itself then in um, overboost, in boost spikes. And so instead of it cutting off at 
just over 30 psi it will go on for you know three or four psi higher if i'm you know accelerating hard and so the problem with that then is you then start to get boost leaks from either from the pipe work you could blow your intercooler if 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 the boost spike is high enough luckily mine isn't like that and so long as i drive it pretty steady until everything's warmed up it then performs absolutely fine so that's why i'm not in a rush but the fact that mine isn't working right is useful for you because um you can see the kind of um the difference between when it's sticking and when it gets freed up so all i've done here is go for a drive to get everything warmed up and now you're going to see how much better the the vnt responds now uh, through revving just from having um, a hot engine and everything's just freed up and you can even see the boost pipe bulging as uh, as boost is generated and you can see full travel of the VNT arm. So then out on the road itself, um, can you see these kind of things going on? Well, the simple answer is yes. With diagnostics, you can very easily start to uh, map the link between engine speed and boost pressure and as you go along basically as the revs rise as you're accelerating you want to see boost come in then the revs will dip as you change gear and then boost will build again so over a period of time you're going to see a really very straightforward link between engine speed and boost pressure and you'll see them rise and fall now when you're actually out and about once you're up to speed say you're on the motorway and you sat at you know motorway speeds um you it doesn't require boost then but then of course if you want to accelerate and overtake as soon as it receives that input from the throttle more fuel is injected, your fuel pressure goes up, and as fuel pressure goes up, it needs boost pressure to increase along with airflow in order to get the fuel fuel air mix correct. And it will perform then as you expect. So if you are either getting no boost low down, or if it's running out of boost very, very quickly, and you have a VNT turbo, then these are kind of the bare minimums that you want to be checking. So yeah, if you haven't got diagnostics already, do get hold of some. They're, they're, they're great to have. It's, it's nice pretty pictures when you're driving just anyway, and, um, and it'll give you lots of information to, uh, to keep your car running well. So there we go, just a nice quick-ish video. <laughs> just going into a little bit more detail and hopefully you find it useful and get your car running well or keep it running well.